What's up guys, it's Shrek, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about this box. Now, if you've already watched the live stream, you know what's in this box, but I'm gonna bust it out. I'm gonna to talk to you about what makes it so special. I'm gonna kind of quickly break that down. We're gonna put it over a chronograph, and then we're gonna talk about how you, yes you, could also have one just as special as this. So this is an SLS, which is a nylon composite laser. It's all done on a Fuse 1. It's a very, very cool material. It's lightweight, it's incredibly strong, and it feels almost like metal. It's really, really, really uh, high quality stuff in a way that most 3D printed blasters just don't deliver. Came out of this super duper cool case from my friend Lucian, who incidentally uh, may have more of an attachment to some of the machines that make these really cool things than it would first seem. But it comes out really easily. Uh, this one's been dyed. He used a fabric dye. Given that nylon is the primary matrix of this material, it's pretty, uh, pretty familiar with dye. Uh, composite dye works really, really well on this stuff. So he made mine burgundy, but... The other one is still in its raw, sandblasted, ready-to-go form, and we'll talk about that one in a moment, but I just wanted to kind of mention how cool the material science behind this is, and if you'll uh, enjoy a sneak preview of next week's video, I'll uh, pull a magazine out like this so that I can prime this guy and throw this home. Now, I think I actually didn't have to prime it. Indeed, as this has a uh, Vanguard-style pusher in there, you could put the magazine in at any point, but uh, prime once to chamber and fire. This is a very comfortable, very compact little talon claw. The talon claw, of course, being a shortened, smallified version of the Calibern platform, which is to say it's a, a, a full length spring, full size plunger, dual bar primed thing. This one's ultra incredibly high quality, not unlike the charity auction one, which will be available for you guys on eBay in the description box down below. But uh, I just wanted to kind of recover this, talk about it, this is an SLA, super cool custom muzzle device. Everything else in here is SLS, which gives it this incredible uh, durability, this incredible like tensile strength and almost, you know, imperceptible layer lines by the time it's been sandblasted. 151 is Lucian's number. I finally figured that out. The CS is, of course, because the original design for the Calibern was by Captain Slug and the Talon Claw. It's just a derivative on that design. Uh, performance is incredibly smooth. Uh, Lucian has made a lot of things really nice about this from the carbon fiber guide rods all the way to the almost full metric redux of the priming bars, the taps, everything's been powder coated, everything is really, really, really slick on this. And because of how the fuse works, you have to kind of batch your whole thing into this big vat. And so it actually made sense while a lot of these are unibody construction parts and that makes them very, very cool, very, very solid. They've been meshed together into one thing. It also offered Lucy the opportunity to make more than just one set of them. So he made a few of these. I want to say there's five total in existence, but he was trying to figure out how you value something like this. Like, how do you value something that was made with hundreds of dollars of material on a uh, printer that costs as much as the average automobile? And he decided that while he still hasn't figured out how he's actually going to market some of the last ones, they're probably going to be gifts. I was fortunate enough to receive this one, and I don't think that I'll ever part with it. This is my dedicated talent claw now. They're just unique and very cool uh, availability to get your hands on this technology in a practical and functional way early. is something that he wanted to share. Uh, through a charitable auction on eBay. Jinx is really spoiled, guys, but uh, she wanted to help talk about the charity. So the charity that Lucian has chosen is the Electronic Frontier Foundation. I'm just gonna read some of this because it was an organization that I wasn't super familiar with, but Lucian, from his industry time, has definitely uh, interacted with them in a very, very positive light. So donations to the EFF go to help the EFF's attorneys, activists, and technologists protect privacy free expression and digital creativity at a time when the world needs it most. And this is like really relevant to our hobby if we want to talk about uh, that in a moment. But they also are doing staunch defense of uh, right to repair work, which means that if you can't fix it, you don't own it. Right to repair is something that's super duper prevalent with some of the somewhat like, I'm not sure if they're negligent or malicious practices that certain toy companies are doing where they're solvent welding shells. And uh, while it was designed from a technologist's point of view to say that people like Apple absolutely have to make their products in such a way that they can be repaired by companies other than Apple explicitly, which in addition to being a very industry important thing is also like such an ethical faux pas for somebody that started in a garage to start closing out the other home brewers and tinkers. So that's one thing that the EFF is doing. They're trying to restore balance to IP laws, ensure that the internet and digital technologies continue to empower us as consumers, creators, innovators, scholars, and citizens. And so like in a world where you know, a lot of things are changing in our hobby, in our industry, in our world, very, very quickly, rapidly, in fact. Uh, we have 
you know, incredible first party manufacturing, making really cool stuff that's in-house IP. But we also have a lot of these third party companies, people like, you know, Worker, which floats between first and third, uh, but also some of these just completely unknown. And I hate to like, when I say Chinese, I just mean the manufacturing is done in China and a lot of the rehashing is done in China. And partially there's like, I don't have a long enough video to explain why when I say Chinese manufacturing, I'm like talking about an entire culture of manufacturing done over there and a complete disregard for, uh, for intellectual property. But we've run into a lot of issues recently where things like the Lynx and things like uh, some of these new blasters like the Zinc, which I want to make a video on very, very soon, are being knocked off faster than the original creators, the original designers can actually not just get them out into the world, but also like profit from them. And I know that that in and of itself gets kind of dicey because people are like, well, why should they care about profiting off of their work? But in a lot of these cases, we're talking about hundreds of hours of designs, multiple prototypes, lots of iteration. And what is like by any metric of a reasonable human being, a lot of work. And so uh, it makes sense to want to profit off of that design. And in a world where like a lot of us wish that we could just open source everything, the constant fear of having somebody else take that work and profit off of it is uh, a little bit stifling at times in the hobby. And I'm not a good guy or a bad guy in this situation. I've definitely published some of my work uh, open source. In fact, all of my content has always been free. And I would argue that that's one of the most valuable things that I've created. But a lot of the parts that I sell on foamproshop.com are not open source. And that's because, you know, I've seen what happens. And in fact, the most successful creators in this hobby in terms of like their impact on the hobby at large and what they're able to do in terms of volume are closed source. Like, I mean, out of Darts doesn't publish his files either. Neither do I, neither do a lot of the other makers that I see with reasonable sales numbers on Etsy or uh, et cetera and so forth. On the other side of the coin, you have guys like Captain Slug who publish open source everything that they do and rely on the sale of, you know, concatenated and consolidated and efficient hardware kits to make that a possibility. But even that is always just, you know, one misstep, one ethical faux pas away from being uh, outsourced. And so that in and of itself can be dangerous. But where we are right now is a very delicate place, and I think that supporting foundations like the EFF help make a brighter future for tinkers everywhere. So I'm a big fan of this charity auction, the one that Lucy's got over on eBay, and I'll put it up right here, is like, oh so slick. The unfinished SLS is just so sharp, and then the fact that his is going to have these yellow, like neon yellow powder coated priming bars is a really nice pop of color that also helps to shout, this is a toy. Other than that, it's got all the same features as mine. It's an incredibly detailed build down to the carbon fiber rails and the custom metal shims to cinch the barrel in. It is really, really nice. But before I send you off into eBay land to see if you would like to throw your hat in the ring for a very special, very high technology, uh, really, really cool collaboration um, out there, I, uh, I do want to put this guy over a chronograph and tell you with, and I think as is becoming quickly the standard with some uh, Dart Zone Pro Darts, uh, or Adventure Force Pros, the AF Pro Darts, actually. I, uh, I'm i gonna put that over the chronograph and we're gonna see some numbers. Also, I wanna see what it looks like in the sun. So we came outside to get you some chronograph readings. I want to reiterate Lucian's uh, charitable auction over on eBay. Uh, it ends on March 5th. So you should have plenty of time, depending upon when you're watching this video, to check it out, see what the, uh, the high bid is at. Your blaster will not get exactly these numbers, but it's built in exactly the same way by exactly the same person. So you do the math, should be pretty similar. Let's put a few this way. 182, that's not bad for a talon claw especially one with such a short barrel like this. That's 184, duplicate 184, duplicate 184, 181. So I think it's pretty safe to say that with these darts in particular, you're gonna get around 
mid 180s. Let's uh, throw a few down range and kind of give you an expectation of how hard it's gonna hit. I cannot get over how smooth the, the unibody build here combined with the, uh, the carbon fiber rods is. Just a lot of care, a lot of attention has been put into making this something really, really, truly special. Uh, there's actually a cinder block over there if I wanna do some accuracy testing, but for right now, I mean, 100 foot shots are, are no joke. Even with a slight curvature to the yard, we are crushing it down there. Now this is, again, explicitly for somebody who doesn't wanna be shouldering too terribly often. It's very much a peel and pop kind of blaster. But sounds good, feels good, looks good. Here, let me take two steps back so that I can get over the fence, point at the cinder block. That one was pretty close. Tight, tight, tight. Just a really sharp blaster for a really good cause. I thought that I would give it one more push. I really wanted to make sure that a lot of people knew about uh, the charity auction. And also like I kind of wanted to, to float out there some of those ethical questions. And then uh, most importantly, I am trying very, very hard to convince myself not uh, to pick up one of these for my workshop just because this new technology just fascinates me. I love uh, 3D printing. I absolutely love having a 3D printing farm. We're up to about 30 3D printers over here at Aether Knot, but they're mostly Prusas and CR10s. It'd be really, really cool to get some alternate technologies in there and start doing some wicked stuff that way. We do have the tacit ability to print some carbon fiber uh, with reinforcement continuous fret on, on a Mark Forge, but that is a, uh, we only have that ability for a couple of days every month here. So um, something special in-house would be pretty neat. Anyway, that is the Burgundy 151 Talonclaw full SLS edition one more time. And if you think that this is just the coolest Talonclaw you've seen, if the idea of an all composite, uh, very sturdy, very solid, very metric build like this appeals to you, or you just want to support a good cause, you could have one too. There will not be many of these out there, guaranteed. Thanks so much for watching. Much love, Blast on Drac out. Uh, uh.